Good morning. My name is Tim Runa. I'm the State Coordinator of the Brassians for Peace. And over the past two years when I've been coming to these meetings, I've had an opportunity to uh, get to meet with a, a number of you personally, and I really appreciate the, uh, the opportunity that you've afforded me. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to comment on the fact that we've heard a lot of really compelling testimony today. And the other thing that really struck me is how courteous it was. Is I think people, for the most part, have been just absolutely straightforward about this, but they're speaking from their heart, and there's been no effort to demonize. And that's really what I want to talk about this morning, is that I grew up in Nebraska. I'm not an OPPD rate payer. I've never lived in Omaha. Um, but every home I've lived in, every business I've been in, every school I've attended has been supplied by public power in the state. And um, I can tell you that in my lifetime, the lights have gone off maybe five times, and that was either a major storm or a squirrel. <laughs> and, um, and I don't blame you for the squirrels. Um, but here I am. Now, I'm, I'm approaching... Yes, I've always been convinced that they're thrown-out squirrels. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they find the serial numbers off and throw the squirrels out. Say, oh, that that true? Well, is that true? Well, I have to say, as a gardener, if you want to go after the squirrels, that would be okay with me. Uh, but but what, I want to, what I want to concentrate on this morning is the fact that I've now been a registered voter for almost 40 years. And um, I have voted repeatedly for public power officials. I've had that opportunity. And um, for 30 years, I've been a professional organizer in the state of Nebraska. And I have actually run campaigns. And uh, in the city of Lincoln, where I live, I was at one point responsible for having a direct hand in the election of five of the seven city council people who confirm who serves on the LAS board, on the Lincoln Electric System board. And I have to tell you that in that 30 years, not once did I ever ask a candidate where they stood on the issue of coal. It never came up. I never thought about it. There I was voting for my public power officials or voting for the mayor who was going to nominate these people or voting for the city council people who were going to confirm <coughs> them. And not once, even though I'm a political activist with a long history, not once did I ever talk about coal. Because the lights were coming on. I, I stayed warm in the winter. I stayed cool in the summer. Public power was doing the job for me. It was only in the past two years that I finally learned that LES gets 85 to 90 percent of its energy from coal. They're of the big three in the state, they're the worst. All right. Have I ever talked with anybody in Lincoln about this? No. No. It's only been in the last two years that this is that this has come out. So what I don't want to communicate today is there is nobody in this room today who is more responsible for the situation that we are in right now than me, because I wasn't watching, or the case may be, nobody knew this stuff. We didn't really know how bad coal was in terms of health, in terms of carbon, until very, very recently. And I want to, I want to make sure that everybody understands today that there's compelling testimony and there is an appeal for, for action on this and so forth. But from my personal perspective, none of you folks are any more responsible than I am. You have been getting a green light and a public sanction from the voters and from the ratepayers from basically the get-go of public power in Nebraska. And I want to thank you for what you've done. Every time that you guys can announce a Prairie Breeze project that will double the renewable energy that you, you provide, that will allow you to hit your goal by 2010 of having 10 per, or 2020 by having 10 percent of your energy coming from from renewable sources, from clean sources, and so forth, I exult with you. I think there's an opportunity for us if we work together to do a lot more. But I do want to thank you for what you've done. I want to thank the men and women of OPPD for what they have done. Because I'll tell you, it's pretty grand when I can go flick on a switch and I've got lights. And it's pretty grand when I can say, boy, I tell you, I just can't live in this house when it's 80 degrees. I've got to turn up that air conditioning. Okay. You folks have done good work. I've had an opportunity in the past few years to find out how good-hearted very, very many of you are. And I look forward to the opportunity of working with you in a constructive fashion in the future. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, Tim, can I ask you a question? Uh, I, I'm not familiar with Nebraskans for Peace. Is, is in, are environmental issues a core of what you do? I thought you were more activist in other areas. And the second part of that is why why here? Why not Lincoln? Aren't you aren't you based in Lincoln? Uh, so I don't know what Nebraskans for Peace, your mission is. What is that? Okay. We are the oldest statewide mm -hmm.
peace and justice organization in the entire United States. Okay. All right. Lots of folks don't know that, okay, and, and we will probably die in obscurity. Right? <laughs> um, except for our bumper stickers. Except for our bumper stickers. Um, I happen to live in Lincoln, which is where the state office is, but there is an office in Omaha, all right? And we do have a statewide mission, and we do work on peace and justice issues, but what really got me galvanized on all this is the, um, the whole issue of climate change. Because we did not understand that burning fossil fuels, which allowed us to have this marvelous civilization that we have, was actually doing all sorts of damage that we could not see, we could not taste, we could not touch. Do you also engage in uh, motor vehicle, uh, changes to motor vehicle statutes because they are the largest emission? I'm, I'm just curious where you're coming from. It, everywhere. Well, what, my, my board, because you're right, we were not founded as an environmental organization. Yeah. We didn't touch this stuff. But it was about 10 years ago that we started saying, hey, wait a second, we're going to end up poisoning our home. We're going to make the, the, the world that we live in unlivable. All these other peace issues that we worry about, that we work on, become fairly moot. If you don't have a place to live, you don't have a place to work for peace and to work for justice. And so suddenly, climate change rocketed to the top of our list of issues that we're concerned about. We're still an anti-war organization. We're still working for justice for, for people of of, of all walks of life and so forth, but climate change is now central to our mission. And and that's why, and, and our attitude on all this is just like your your sign says there and so forth. I'm not into making any any enemies here. I'm not into, you know, to, to showdowns or face offs or whatever like that. I'm into partnerships. I don't think that we have much time to grapple with this project and the best way that we're gonna do this is if we all put our heads together. Thank you. 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 Uh, they're disgusting. You are a polluting utility. You make nuclear waste and you pollute your home law as we've heard. So, um, I think you fail. I think this management has failed. We have a nuclear power plant that's been closed down in the 0350 NRC, first time in 10 years. You told us all in 2000 it'd be $250 million. This man here, he testified in 2000 and said he wanted to keep the nuclear power plant open for Blair. You spent a billion dollars since that day, a billion dollars in Blair. You think you could have maybe created more jobs than 700 in the last 10 years? I think we could have, pursuing smart grid and efficiency. That's where labor is. That's where jobs are created, when people start changing the windows, doors, and insulation. When people start really pursuing passive solar, not just active, because active is very expensive. But moving your windows around isn't. Putting in a, a triple or a quadruple four with argon gas windows give you a times 10 factor. Every kilowatt of coal we save here, we save 10 at the power plant. You want to reduce pollution, reduce everybody's energy consumption. If you want to lower our, how much money we spend on utility bills, why don't you lower our consumption? You brag about low utilities, but you have a high pollution. So you have a huge impact. 